This video is about taking regular aspirin and turning it into phenol. Some information, the formula of phenol is C6H6O, and I want to go to the next slide here just to describe how we end up with that. Okay, aspirin is known as acetyl salicylic acid, and sometimes it's shortened with ASA for the letters that begin with each word here. We're going to form salicylic acid next, and finally we're going to form the phenol. These are 2D representations of each of the chemicals that's formed at each step here. So we'll start with the first one. This is, again, aspirin or acetyl salicylic acid. And it's got a benzene ring. That's what this is. And I noted here that there's a C and an H at this corner. There is not a C and an H added to this corner. But that represents that at each of these corners, there's a carbon. And to each of those carbons, there's a hydrogen. So I sort of randomly placed one here and a couple over here just to remind us that that's what's happening at each of these corners. To this carbon right on the corner there, there's no hydrogen attached, but it's attached to another carbon, which is right here. We can't see that, but that's what that means. And then to that carbon is a double bonded oxygen and then a single bond going to an OH group. And this group right here is called a carboxyl group. At this carbon, we can see there's a single bond to an oxygen. And then that oxygen is single bonded to the carbon, which is in the corner here, which again, it's not shown. And that carbon here is double bonded to an oxygen right here. And it's single bonded to a carbon and three hydrogens. This whole thing right here is known as an ester written down here. So the uh, formula for aspirin written out simply is C9, H8, and O4. But not knowing that there's a carbon with a hydrogen actually at each of these corners, you wouldn't be able to come up, come up with this accurately. When we go through the actual experiment, we're actually going to boil the aspirin in water right here. And you'll notice that when we go from the aspirin to the salicylic acid right here, this group up here is still there, the carboxyl group. But this group down here changes when we boil it. And we lose everything except for an oxygen and a hydrogen. And then we're going to take the salicylic acid here and we're going to distill it over heat. And you can see that when we do that, we're going to end up with phenol here, which has lost everything except for the OH group. Go through this in a simpler fashion. We start out with the aspirin, which is noted at C9H8O4. We lose a C2H2O when we end up with just the OH group here. Okay, we started with this right here. We're losing two carbons, two hydrogens, and an oxygen for us only to have an OH group left. And then what happens with this ester group that's left, we combine it with water, which is happening because we're boiling it, and we end up with acetic acid, which is vinegar, diluted vinegar, and this will sublime with heat. So as we continue to boil, essentially what you will smell is some acetic acid smell or vinegar smell. Now that we've lost the C2H2NO, we have C7H6O3, and that is salicylic acid. And we're going to put that in a distillation apparatus, and we're going to heat it. And when we do that, we're going to drive off the carbon dioxide group. This is the carboxyl group here, and car carbon dioxide is driven off as a gas and we're left with C6H6O. So C7H63 lose a CO2, and you have C6H6O. And this, of course, is the same as this right here. So that's how we end up with our phenol. Let's go back to the previous slate. Phenol was first discovered in 1834, and it was derived from coal tar. And coal tar is a thick black liquid that comes from the incomplete combustion of coal. The number one use of phenol is as a disinfectant, but it also has some other uses as it is an analgesic. So Chloroseptic, which is a sore throat spray, uses phenol as its primary ingredient to numb your throat when it's sore. One of the reasons it works well for these couple of things here is that it lasts a long time. It lasts much longer than, say, xylocaine or lidocaine. Beyond to our materials, we need ASA or aspirin, acetyl salicylic acid. We need some distilled water, and we need a distillation apparatus. For our methods, we're going to take a one liter beaker, fill it with water, and then we're going to boil it and then put 100 aspirins into that and continue to boil this for at least 30 minutes. Your 100 aspirins here will dissolve completely while it's boiling this long. And what we're doing again is we're driving off that component that eventually turns into acetic acid. If you boiled it for at least 30 minutes, you wanna let it cool and what will come out of solution as a precipitate is salicylic acid. And once that is done cooling completely, we need to filter it and dry the salicylic acid. If you heat your salicylic acid too much while you're trying to dry it, or even too long, it does sublime, as we noted earlier, and you will lose some of your product. So you just have to watch that carefully. Once your salicylic acid is dry, you want to put it into your distillation apparatus here in the speaker, and you want to heat it. And you want to get this really hot. Somewhere between 150 and 200 degrees Celsius, the phenol will start to come over and drip into your uh, round-bottom flask on this side, and 
there's your end product. A lot of information was covered here, but when you think about it, we're just boiling aspirin and then we're distilling the product. So overall, the actual method here is actually pretty simple. So let's get to it. Due to the fact that we're using distilled water and the glass has very few imperfections, there are no bubbles, but it is boiling temperature. So I'm gonna start adding the aspirin. Kind of fun watching them dissolve. Once I added the aspirin, I couldn't get this to fully boil in the lab on the heater there. So I brought it in the house and it's on the stove here, boiling away. And like I said, this has to go for about 30 minutes. You really want to boil off all the acetyl portion or you'll end up with some acetic acid in your phenol when you start to distill this. I put this in the fridge for a couple hours and you can see all of the salicylic acid that's packed in there, partly because we lost a lot of water trying to boil it than when I did boil it, but uh, no harm done. It's just really tightly packed in there, so much so that Stick that right in there. It just needs to be broken up now and filtered. This is a happy experiment. I'm just breaking the salicylic acid up, it feels a little bit like uh, styrofoam actually. And there's quite a bit of liquid left in here. Just starting to filter the salicylic acid out of the water. It's supposed to be a pretty fine particle, so I've double filter papered this thing. And I believe it's going to take quite a bit, so I'll be back. It's done filtering, so I'm going to remove the filter paper here and lay this out on some paper toweling for a bit until some of that water is absorbed into the paper toweling. I'll probably change that a couple times. You can see that even with double filter paper, some still got through. It's not perfectly clear, but it's a lot better than it would have been if just using one sheet. Just chopping it up so that uh, you have more surface area for it to dry out. I flattened out that pile of salicylic acid into a very thin coating here on top of the filter paper. And it's on top of the light bulb, the chemical heater here, and hopefully it dries quickly this way. Move the salicylic acid to a new filter paper. When this tends to dry right on the paper, it's very hard to get off, so I didn't want that to happen. So this has turned into a powder. It's really dry. I'm going to turn this off. Yeah, it's like an optical illusion there. Well, we're done with our salicylic acid. On to the next step. Salicylic acid does sublimate if you heat it too long, and there's some evidence of it right there. We got 22.6 grams of salicylic acid out of 100 aspirins. To start the distillation, I'm adding the salicylic acid here to a 500 milliliter round bottom flask. A quick review, we're going to heat up the salicylic acid, driving off the carbon dioxide. The phenol, which is left, will come over in the distillation and end up in the small flask over here. The distillation's ready to go. To help increase the temperature inside this round bottom flask right here, I've covered it with aluminum foil, and that's to keep the heat inside and get the phenol to the temperature it needs to be in order to be distilled over to the other side. After 10 minutes, you can see the salicylic acid has liquefied. This is normal. It turns dark like this, and after some time, once the phenol has been completely distilled over, it becomes a black, tarry substance. It's a little bit hard to get off the glassware. I hope you can see this, but the very first few drops of phenol are starting to come over. There you go. It's been about a half hour since I started, and there's a, maybe two to three milliliters, I'm guessing, because of what's happening on this side, which is the black tarry substance that's going to uh, heat up and stick to the side. I may end this before it's completely done distilling. There hasn't been any phenol coming over for quite a while now, so I am going to turn this off and let it all cool down, and then we'll check out our phenol. As this cools down, you can see what I believe are small droplets of phenol still bouncing around in there. I'm not 100% sure what is left in here. Obviously, there's some phenol in there. Having done this previously, I do know it smells a little bit like turpentine. The first couple times I did this, that black tarry stuff was so hard to get off, and I eventually used acetone. It worked the best, and uh, but it still took some scrubbing. This time, I poured the acetone in right away, and there's nothing left on the wall. This is our phenol. You can see it's nice and clear. And you can even see it's pure enough that it's crystallized on the bottom, which can happen at room temperature. It's about 72 degrees in here right now. So nice little batch there. This is not the best way to obtain phenol. Buying a bunch of aspirin, making salicylic acid, and then distilling it is just not the way to go. If you want phenol, you should actually purchase it. This is really for educational purposes. These crystals should disappear nicely with the heat.
and there went the top. But as you can see, it cleared up. The phenol is now liquid, and I can actually check how much I made. It's a little hard to see, but this is six milliliters of phenol that came from the 100 aspirin we started with. This is a substance that was on the bottom of that round bottom flask, and I took some of it from when I had dissolved it with acetone and let it dry out. It reminds me a lot of coal tar, and I'm just wondering if there's any relationship, considering that phenol was originally pulled and discovered from coal tar.